Aloha kako. As you all know, OEV Edge Learning and Teaching is our campus standard of excellence, a standard that is unique to Kamehameha Hawaii, not only inspired by Kelly Ipoahi's lineage, but also shaped by generations of innovators and strong community voices. OEV Edge is a pathway for all learners, kumu and haumana, to engage a rapidly changing world with courage and aloha. As we collectively grow our OEV Edge understanding, it's important to recognize and highlight work that exemplifies and celebrates OEV Edge learning and teaching and helps us all grow and discover a deeper understanding of what we can accomplish through our OEV Edge standards. Today, I would like to recognize two of our 2020 graduates, Travis Chai Andrade and Lehua Vayanuhea, who through the mentorship of Po'okumo Lehua Vincent, Dr. Clint Anderson, Kumu Karin Kano, and Kumu Jan Capero, curated an anthology of student voices published as Ala Uivi. Ala Uivi, their student legacy project aimed at filling the void of cultural literature and capturing Kanaka Maoli voices amongst their peers here at Kamehameha Hawaii. Ala Uivi is an example of how our students can exercise their own agency to empower themselves and reclaim a narrative that records their own historical and OEV experiences. It is with great pleasure that I present this short video capturing the voices of these two young OEV leaders whose work, Ala OEV, serves as a model of OEV edge learning and teaching. Enjoy. In my mind, if you were Hawaiian, you loved to go to the fish pond. Like when you were in that stinky, rotten egg water, like you were just loving it and you were having so much fun. And like that just wasn't me. And because of that, there was this disconnect between what I viewed as a Hawaiian and my perception of myself as a Hawaiian. When I was a freshman coming from Oregon, I had just moved to Hawaii and not really being sure of my identity, almost feeling kind of ashamed of not being solid in who I thought I was and kind of trying to figure that out. I didn't really consider myself Hawaiian despite going to Kamehameha schools, despite having the blood, I didn't see myself as Hawaiian. Aloha o no Travis Kanoa Chai Andrade o Travis Andrade ko umakua kane o Isha Charbonneau ko umakua hine o Alicia Andrade ko u kaikua hine no bai kahe kahe mayao. Uh, hi, my name is Travis Kanoa Chai Andrade. My parents are Travis Andrade and Isha Charbonneau. I have a younger sister, Alicia Andrade, who will be a sophomore this year, and I'm from HPP. Aloha o vau o lehua wainuhea o ululani ho ko umakua hine o kalau koa chen ko umakua kane no uh, hilo ame honomu mayao. Hello, my name is lehua wainuhea. My mother is ululani ho and my father is kalau koa chang. I'm from Hilo and Honomu. Ala Oivi goes back before the published book to our student lecture sophomore year. We were each given um, an opportunity to explore an aspect of OEV genius and culture that was interesting to us. And so for me, I focus kind of on the role culture played here at Kamehameha and how we as students connect to our identity as Hawaiians. Sophomore year, I had an honors Eng English class with Miss Kano and Travis was there too. And we were learning about OEV genius. And she told us that by the end of the year, we would have a TED Talk and we would each have to come up with a definition or an explanation of what we thought OEV Genius was. One of the most important things was she also gave us a journal where we could write about our feelings and how we thought about who we were and how we perceived ourselves. And then she gave us active feedback about what she saw or how she felt about what we were feeling. So she put little stickers and wrote comments in there. And that was really empowering and validating to see a teacher write things to us, give us personal feedback. And that it was part of the reason why we made Ala Uibi because it came from that.
Travis was the one who actually discovered the term liminality and it was during our research process where we were creating our project proposals and we were focusing on empowerment, how it happens, through self-expression, things like that, and also Hawaiian history, which was the focus of my research project. But we use liminality as a term to explain transition and moving through spaces. So it's actually a concept that was introduced in anthropology to understand the rite of passage. And so there's three stages in liminality. The first is a separation or a disconnect. And then the second stage would be the limen or the liminal, the transitional stage. And that's what liminality is really about, the threshold, kind of being in between, kind of like that OEV edge space. And then the third stage is a reassimilation where you've connected to your next group. And as I was looking at that, I kind of saw a parallel between our Hawaiian culture. And so there's a separation, an obvious separation between the way things were done in the past. Um, colonization, the banning of the Hawaiian language, suppression of our culture, all of these things created a disconnect from the way things were done before. We as students are more aware of our identities, not just as Hawaiians, but kind of as social justice as a whole. We kind of find ourselves in this liminal state where we're not a part of the way things were done before and we're not a part of, we can't reassimilate to anything. And I think that's what's interesting in looking at liminality in the context of Hawaiian culture, in that there's nothing we can really reassimilate to. And so, in one sense, that's scary because we don't really know what's next and we don't know what's ahead. But at the same time, it's empowering in and of itself because it gives us the ability to create that path forward. And so even though we don't know what's ahead, kind of grounding ourselves in our story and in our history and claiming our narratives of what gives us that power to create our own ala forward. I think that we have the responsibility and the power to validate our oral histories, our stories, things like that, and bring them into academic spaces. When we were talking about it, we saw the potential that a project like this could have in other students not only being able to share their voice and feel empowered, but like giving other students the opportunity to connect to their culture, kind of like that same realization that I had. When I was in eighth grade, I was living in Oregon and I had written a historical fiction novella and I had spent the whole year writing and editing and researching for this project. And I remember my mom and I had taken this journey to Portland and I had my whole project on this little USB and we went to Powell's Books and then we plugged it into this machine and I watched my book being printed and I watched each page cut and folded and glued into the binding and I remember holding it and that feeling of just seeing the fruition of your work is amazing and I want everyone to be able to feel that. That's why I joined Alo Weeby is I want kids to be able to feel validated in that way and see their work out there. I really want to foster empathy within our community through people with different experiences and talk about how we are developing those identities and constructing them, deconstructing them. We'd go to our friends and we'd go to just random people in the cafeteria in the library, hey, you wrote this essay, can I publish it? And they're actually like, oh, you don't want my work, like it's not that good, like you don't want to publish it, but just kind of telling them that, no, your work is good, we want to publish your work, it's meaningful and it shares such an important story. Empowerment can come through self-reflection and through self-expression. So it was extremely validating to read research papers about that and about art and how that makes people feel and how that makes people reflect on who they are. Whether it be a poem or a piece of art or an essay, knowing that they are capable is the first step of empowerment speaking up and standing up for whatever it is that they believe in and don't be afraid to follow your path wherever it takes you. To me, Ala Uivi is a path in and of itself in that the way we've organized these works tells a story and so it starts with our aina, which is like our history. And so we have to question who were we and where do we come from? And so for Hawaiians, that's our aina because our land is everything. And then once we can understand our history, we begin to understand ourselves. And so the second section of Ala Uivi is our identities. And so once we've understand that, who are we and who are we now? And how do we use those histories to kind of shape the world that we want to live in? 
And once we have those two understandings, we can begin to tell those stories. We can begin to rise up and we can begin to use those things to really shape our world and speak up against things we don't believe are right and speak for things we do believe are right. I guess one moment where it kind of really all came together and you could see how empowering it was, was our senior expo night. And so I was super extra and I found like a red carpet and I rolled it out and I um, found like those stanchions. And we blew up some of the pieces really big. All of Weavey is this metaphorical space of empowerment. And what we wanted to do was create this physical space of empowerment to kind of parallel and mirror what we were hoping Ala Uivi would do. I would ask my Kumu to continue making collaborative open spaces for students to really explore their identity and different topics and give them freedom and also giving them personal feedback. I think Ms. Kano just really nailed it. Just her having connections with us was so important. Everyone is truly here to support us and encourage us in our growth and development. And I think that as we as students connect to our culture, it's important that we have opportunities to find aspects of it that we are passionate about and not necessarily that one mold, that one worksheet. Not everyone's going to connect to it. If there's an opportunity for individualized learning and an individualized approach to culture, I think that makes the learning a lot more meaningful and a lot more powerful because it gives students a chance to explore something that they're passionate about. With everything that's going on in the world right now, taking that empowerment a step further and not just looking at self-empowerment and empowerment of our culture, but kind of social justice and social change. And really what we wanted Ala Oibi to do is show our students and our peers that they are capable of producing wonderful and amazing work. Sharing voice, sharing perspectives and reading about them, looking at them, just fostering empathy and trying to understand where other people are coming from, their backgrounds, things like that. And really seeing how similar we are deep down is really important. And I hope that's what Aloevi does. You know, I have this idea in my head and it's really cute, like a kindergartner will pick it up now and they might not be able to read all the essays and stuff, but they'll look at the pictures and they'll be, oh, that's a pretty picture. And they'll just kind of carry Ala Oivi with them as they go through their time at Kamehameha. And then as they begin to approach their senior year, maybe they pick it up again and they can better understand those essays and look at it in a new light. And it just inspires them to continue empowering their peers and empowering student voice. And so, you know, maybe that's volume three or volume four, but just that it's this continual work and it's not just something that's one and done, it's something that is able to continue happening.